Nu är nya Casumo.com här. Just nu får du dubbelt på kontot och 110 gratis chanser att vinna storkovan. Casumo, ett kasino. Casumo.com Looks like it's gonna be another B-split push coming up here, standard as could be for the T-side. Yeah, they are getting ready for it right now. They've got uh, they've got two people coming out through the middle, three people through upper dark at the moment. This counter-terrorist holding one guy inside the B-bomb site, one guy down towards the middle of the map. Yeah, that B-slope man on CT-side is gonna be the linchpin here. T-side, they've managed to put the CT-smoke down. No support coming in from the A-site here for the defense. It's all gonna come down to the entry shots here, the man making the plan. It's getting kind of cold in here. Did you leave the window open? I don't think so. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. You can take the blue or the red pill or the green one. What? There's a green one? Sweet.
Alright, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to the show. So I've lost Semler on, on the Skype call. No, there we go. The video is still up. Just need to change it around a little bit. What's up, Semler? How are you doing? Ah, you got the I'm mic. I'm chilling, man. Gotta get the mic. Gotta get the mic in front. But That's yeah, right. man. I'm chilling. I'm waiting. I had time to, to grab a little bite to eat. Make sure that I was hydrated. Make sure that I was ready. Because now it's Mouse Sports Cloud 9 and anything can happen. Yeah, you're damn right about that. And yes, so getting something to eat and drink is definitely a good idea. I got something to drink. Eating will have to wait until sometime later. We have our three best of threes for you guys today. One of them is already over because Virtus Pro decided to just went you know, just go completely mad on NIP and two owed them. A super impressive performance from the Polish team. And NIP just showing us, well, gonna take a little more work to get Michael Lele fitting in the team and everything else. So not really too worried about NIP just yet, but definitely a strong performance from Virtus Pro either way. And you're right, now we have the second best of three coming up, which is Cloud9 versus Mouse Sports. And then, I mean, Virtus Pro already in the finals, which means one of these two teams is going to go and meet them later on tonight in a third best of three. Now, before we do anything else, uh, let me remind all of you to go to facebook.com forward slash Case King Gaming. Uh, click that uh, link. It's really going to be in the chat somewhere any second now. And um, go and like the Facebook page. Really appreciate you guys for helping us out with that. And uh, remember, later on, we'll also be giving away one of these Bit Phoenix Flow headsets and one of the CPU coolers from Alpenfoon. This one, the Walken Eco. So, um, yeah, we can win that. You saw it in the ad as well. Uh, really tiny, but still um, pretty good at its job. So uh, don't forget about that either. Now we're going to switch it over to the game uh, since we're done talking. We also have some subscriber giveaways uh, that we'll be doing later on. I've been looking through my inventory. One of them is going to be one of these AK Vulcans. The other one is going to be... This uh, steel disruption, I, I keep saying distribution whenever I see this block, I don't know why, don't blame me too much. Uh, steel disruption stat track as well, and I swear I found something else that I thought we could give away, which was, uh, where is it? Had an AW, this, no, not that one. This stat track AWP, we'll give away one of these as well, so that's three items for uh, for three different uh, subscribers. So thank you very much, guys, uh, for helping us out with the subscriptions. Uh, really hell, uh, appreciate that a lot, too. Don't forget to visit TV, and I think we're just about done, you know, shouting all those things out. It means we can focus on the game. Semler, um, Cloud9 and Mars Sports, who's going to win this? No way to tell, man. No way to call it. Spent the time? Okay, I know that that's a bit of an anticlimactic, you know, like, you know, you're like, who's going to win it, man? Give it to us. Tell us exactly who's going to come out on top of this magnificent best of three. And I'm sitting here thinking, it's too damn close. It's too damn close between these two teams because basically right now, to put it bluntly, Cloud9, we saw them play well when nothing played well. But nothing, he could, you know, basically... Just, I don't know, you, you know, something basically, you know, he pulls a muscle while he's running or something like that. Ruins his day. He, d he doesn't show up for the match. Cloud9 suffer because of it. Whereas Mouse Sports, we're playing this online right now, and that is very clearly Chris J's domain. So, so what you're saying is, because normally it's, you know, you say it's all or nothing. But right now it's nothing or nothing, you know. That's how it works out, basically. Dangerous game for uh, Cloud9 to play. The, actually, what worries me is the... The goddamn map picking stage here. Somehow we've ended up playing Dust 2 and Mirage as the first two maps, and then Cash as the designing map, which means Mouse Sports, yet again in the best of three, get to play their two best maps as the first two maps. And Ca I, I feel like if it goes to Cash, I would be devastated if Cloud9 can't win it. That should be one of their really good maps. Um, but, but Mouse Sports are really good on it as well. So. Yeah, but I, I, ha I, sh I, sh I think Cloud9 should be better on it than, than Mouse Sports, to be, to be frank. They should just be better on that map. But I'm yeah, not sure they, they, they can make it through the first two maps. That's the big problem. If wishes were fishes, we'd all fly away, man. Like, should, could, would. I, I, have, I don't have the most confidence in Cloud9 right now, actually. I feel like that we should be seeing a lot more out of them, regardless of the map. It feels like we really should be seeing a lot more from them. But, you know, it's still not quite there. They feel very confident right now. They feel like they're finally getting out of this slump phase that they were in. They've got, Semp uh, they've got you know, Sempus not calling. Sean Gares is calling now, so that gives a bit more structure to, say, players like nothing who really thrive in that sort of um, situation where they can they have a plan in mind. They know what the teammates are doing. They're going to be able to execute on that. And that really favors players like nothing. So yeah. that's why I think we're seeing him, like, really step up and start to get a lot of frags on the boards because he's now in his element. But it still feels like, you know, they need to assemble more of the pieces of the puzzle for for Cloud9 to be that dominant North American team again. You know, bringing the freedom worldwide. 
yeah, that's that's what they need. What they'll get is uh, is probably something different, but uh, it never really never really turns out. You know, you can't always get what you want. So, mouse sports on the other hand, um, they've been sticking with Carrigan for a while now. Although it was pretty obvious from the beginning that this was going to be like a test, you know, kind of thing. But you know, they've they still kept them around uh, even after ESWC and all that stuff. So I'm I'm kind of curious to see how that's going to turn out. Uh, the Mouse Sports team, team, I mean, they're really strong. Chris J and, uh, and Alu, just having those two players alone in any kind of map where a double up setup works out is really painful to play against. Tams and Legia and Carrigan, they can carry their own at any random, you know, time in the game. And if they just, you know, line up with the other two players, then I think Mouse Sports have a pretty good chance of doing this. Um, I, I'm going to be the really boring person and say Mouse Sports are going to 2-0 Cloud9 on, on these two first maps. Just to make a prediction, you know. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> you mute your mic. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> I, sometimes I remember, and sometimes I just forget. My bad. So, yeah, like I don't think that's. I think that's actually reasonable, man. What's What's crazy is you know going into the map to into the first best of three today. I really expected a bit more from NIP. To, to actually, you know, I expected that to be a real fight for them to just, you know, really make VP work for it. But Vert Virtus Pro kind of just walked through an IP. And for some reason, at the back of my head, I have the same feeling from Cloud9. I feel like, you know, I expect magic from them. But I think, you know, Cloud, uh, I think Mouse Sports are the ones who are going to show up on their broomsticks. Very, it very likely could be. Um, Cloud9 definitely have, they have all the resources. They have all the players in their team to, to be an absolutely dominating team. But, uh, some of the, like you said, some of these online matches you've been seeing from them, they just have not been as impressive as we would have liked. So that's what I partly base my, uh, my thing on. And then the other thing is the map choices. I feel like Mouse Sports got a lot of these two maps here. We'll find out any second. Welcome to the show. This is the Case King, King of Kings. And we've got Mouse Sports versus Cloud9. Best of three game just starting off now with Mouse Sports on the CT side and Cloud9 starting on the Terror side. Looks like they're actually taking Crawler short quite quickly. And Tabson is in a strange position. If they just rush the corner, there's no way he's going to survive. But that's a great headshot to start off with. He wants a little bit more. He's going to pick up. Oh, that's Chris picking up a kill. And Tabson joins him with a... Second headshot right there, and he's even gonna go look for more. That's a third kill from Tabson, and all of Cloud9 are gone. What a strange position. I mean, if you're in this position and they just rushed the corner, then you can't even hide. There's no way of jumping out of here. I don't know what to say. Did we? Oh, did you mute yourself again? And I didn't mute you either, so somehow the it's not quite working. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ah, there we go. For some reason the mic. Now, okay, we had this yesterday when I was streaming. The mic, the mic will just cut out sometimes. Uh, but basically, I guess that saves me because I was basically going, you know, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and how did Tabson live behind that, crouched behind the flames, basically, and hitting just headshots? And Cloud9 never really seemed to figure out where he was getting shot from. Power of the USP? I don't know. That was ridiculous. I mean, surely you can't actually use those... F no, they should have seen him, but, um... That could be a really tricky spot. I mean, if you're behind the flames with the smoke and you've got the USP, I mean, if he had a P2K, it'd be a totally different story. They'd know exactly where he, uh, where he was immediately. I think it took them a little time to catch on there, because the first guy to make it around the corner just got instinct. He was gone immediately, so maybe he couldn't call to his mates, like, hey, he's behind this car, because maybe he didn't actually see where he died from. Carrigan doing a great job this round cleaning up. Actually, Cloud9 got some really good entry frags. The bomb is still going to go down here. So, I mean, from Cloud9's point of view, this is still a pretty big success. Just getting the two kills in and getting the bomb plant. See if they could do a little bit more. Carrigan down on long and Legius charging in. Nothing getting the first kill, but he can't pick up the second one. And now it's all on Semphis here. One on two. Goes for the instant headshot on Legia. Turns around and Carrigan survives on four health with four kills. Defusing the bomb with four seconds left and... Unfortunately, it's only the second round. It wouldn't look great if we could line that up. But yeah, Mouse Sports, they end up picking up the round, but only just barely. What a crazy round. What is going on, man? This is, okay, this is really an explosive start to the game. Tabs and already the King of Pistols right there. Steps it up for Mouse Sports and the King of Kings, sponsored by Case King. More Kings. But Tabs and already showing that he's royalty right there. But then in the second round, all of a sudden, Cloud9, they make it really close. And now we have a buy coming out from Cloud9. Two rifles, three, two CZs, and a Deagle. Cloud9 are not messing around right now. They know they did some serious economic damage to Mouse Sports in that last round. 
This is some true American style Counter Strike. This is, I mean, it's it's been it's been a little bit contagious because a lot of the European teams have started trying to do this as well. But um, I think Cloud9 they they do this a little bit more than everyone else essentially, just buying up at crazy times. Obviously, the 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 gamble here is that, as you said, t Mouse Sports are nearly plain broke. But at the same time, they're fighting with two AKs, deal two C sets, and a couple of grenades. If they don't win this round, they'll they'll have given a lot away to Mouse Sports. Exactly right. But they want the power. And they can't afford it right now. So they're going to go have these and pick up a couple CZs. But this could do some damage. Cloud9 gathering up for a cat push. There are currently two guys holding here for Mouse Boys, however. Kerrigan, Solid and Goose turned away. And Chris J with that AWP. Do you really want to face Chris J? He's got his op, Anders. They probably don't, which is why they're trying to throw up all these smokes here. But Chris is going to pick off Semphis, who has the bomb. He misses the next one, though. Now Kerrigan is all the way in the back end. they got to play this smartly. But in fact, Tabson ends up uh, not being able to help out Kerrigan here. So the bomb should be going down. Sean Gans is going to drop it. Kiko trying to play the edge of the smoke and charges in on Alu, who still gets the kill with the FAMAS. Oh, Hiko looked like he had that spray so well on the control. And now it's up to Sean Gans. He's already got two kills. And he needs two more. First one on Legge is going to be the toughest one because he's got 100 health here. But the bomb is ticked so far away. They're actually taking a long time here, Mouse Sports. And I'm assuming they can pick up a kit somewhere. Otherwise, they've basically lost the round almost. I'm looking for the kit right now. Is there a kit on Kerrigan? Yep. I see no kit. Legge okay, just picked picks it up. It up. Oh, my there God. There it is. That is so dangerously close. Down to the vi- Oh, oh no! He get it! Oh, my God! The Mouse Sports outplayed themselves. That is big. Cloud9, I mean, such a big risk on their part. And all Mouse Sports get is the stolen AWP. And Cloud9, they can buy up even with a MP7 on Semphis. What a round. Wait a second. How did they afford to have the AWP on Chris J? No, no, he, he ran away with it. Okay, he ran away with it. Right I was about to say. Uh, that was very odd. That's incredible that they actually managed that. Chris J is going to find the entry frag. They'll take out Shroud. Over at Long House. It looks like Cloud9 this time around are going to shift things up. They're going to go straight for B. Alu's here with the CZ. What's up? Stop that cold. Oh, but he goes down. If he could have if he could have joined up with Legia and they were both shooting, but Chris is still covering the crossover here. Smoke goes off, and actually he just fires a little bit prematurely. So three on three. This is one hell of a way to start a game right now. This is everything we could have wanted. Close rounds down to the wire. And now we have Kerrigan sneaking forward up to window. Could find the angle here. Sean Garris is holding close, though. These aren't going to be easy shots. Nothing at back plateau, though. Peaks out. Gets dropped down to 3 HP. Oh, nice shot from Kerrigan there. Hiko hiding inside. He's not. He's going to get the first one. Keep spraying. Again, this time they do have the kit, and they have the time for it. Great retake from Mouse Sports. Very impressive play. Cloud9 just not being able to hold on to it at the end there. So 3 to 1. And now the North American team is the one the one who has the eco here so strange strange game to start off with here this is yeah this is such a, a nail biter man this is incredible mouse sports as soon as they come in there nothing gets dropped down to three hp already but the kill on sean gares is the one that starts the party really for mouse sports because if nothing can stay alive maybe if sean gares stays alive though it's tough for them to get to nothing even though he's low the sean gares getting killed allows for him to push the window and then it just all falls apart from there cloud nine though we're already going to have a one for one trade in the lower halls so Alu is off the map, and he's given a gun over to Shroud. It'd be almost too much to handle if this one gun is what's going to turn it back in favor of Cloud9 again, because this has already been such a an unorthodox game. Great round, last round from uh, Carrigan as well, doing a really good job getting that first entry frag inside there. He's going to cross his way over. Legia hiding in the back actually does take a lot of damage from uh, from that AK on Shroud, and it feels like they want to go for a bit of a B-split with only Hiko coming out from the middle. Could be enough if he can just distract Carrigan for a second. Yeah, that was very cute. Sempus jumped across his bait to set it up for Shroud with that AK. And Legia almost buy bought it, but it looks like Cloud9. 45 seconds left, and they're rotating back to Cat. They're, they were hoping with all this noise that they may have caused a rotation. But Mouse Sports are really playing this very patiently right now. They haven't really seen anything out of Cloud9, so they haven't rotated anybody over. It's still two guys holding on the A site. Chris J's got his AWP as well. Carrigan really checking up a dark here, which is very important. That means now they pretty much know that everyone else is going to be over here because Carrigan's already spotted out the rest of the map. Tabson, they almost line up for him, and that's near perfection. Chris raiding right at the edge. He misses the shot, but the USPS will pick it up. And then Hiko comes in from behind, and it's a one-on-two, but Hiko only has 10 seconds. He needs to pick up the bomb and run back with the knife out. Tragically for him, Carrigan is here, and that's going to be an easy kill. 
It's a nice attempt from Hiko. He couldn't really do much in that position, actually. So, 4-1. to one. Mouse boards so far coming out ahead in this, uh, in this slightly crazy exchange that's been happening in the first five rounds. I uh, just barely hanging in there. Still, t still suffering losses, despite that being like a semi buy coming out of Cloud Nine. I mean, Mouse Sports are cutting it close, but it it's almost individual play that's making the difference because I think that Tabson pretty much saves it from Mouse Sports that last round. Him getting those two kills at long is just amazing. Oh, it's look huge. at this, Leggy. He actually Molotovs and runs through his own Molotov to get that kill, and L runs back out again. He was joining up. That is such a tricky play coming out from Mouse Sports. We've seen him do it before. But uh, it's still very hard for Cloud9 to... All they hear is the fire and they think, Alright, nope, we're just going to run a different way. And then they actually get attacked instead. Alu's going to go down to Shroud, who just puts a couple of uh, rounds through. And now it's another three-on-three -three retake, which Cloud9 should definitely have the advantage here. They even have a smoke on Semphis to block up the doors. So this should be good, unless, you know, Chris does some magic here. Uh, Chris isn't good. He shouldn't be given a target right here. Cloud9 should just be waiting. They shouldn't even peek him. They don't need to give him a target. Let him waste time thinking somebody's hiding behind box on Plateau. And there you go. Sempus manages to peek forward, take out Tabson. Hiko finds the perfect timing after the off shot to take out Chris. And just like that, Cloud9 have the full control of the situation. Kerrigan, he just needs to back off and hold on to the gun. He's trying his best, but actually he kind of wants to halfway take a fight. And that sometimes is a, sometimes going to be an issue. So Sempus lends the shot. 4-2, to two, Cloud9 back in the game, especially if you look at the money on Mouse Sports, and they forced up this round. That's, that's curious. Do you believe in the power, Anders? Do you believe in... No, I actually don't. I, no I actually, fear? I actually think this is a mistake from, from Mouse Sports, but I mean, maybe it's going to work anyway. I just, I'm just not a big fan of it. I, this, this, to me, is just like... This is a bare knuckle boxing match. That's what we're watching right now. Basically, these guys are beating each other upside the head, and it, the first one to eco is pretty much the first one to lose. I hope nobody's gonna punch Sean in the face though. He's too pretty for for, uh, for that. <laughs> Tabson is waiting right here at the edge with the uh, five seven in hand. Pretty good weapon for this kind of range. Instant headshot if he gets a little bit closer. And Chris J is going to be right at the edge with the C set 75. He wants to find the timing. Flashbang in. He gets one. He gets two. He runs them over. Oh, Chris J. Perfect timing. Ta flashed in by a teammate. Shroud now the only one left here in a one on four. So, yeah, I think bare knuckle boxing is definitely a, a, a pretty good analogy at this point. Chris J, the whirlwind, man. Shroud, last man alive, just trying to do the best that he can, but he's boxed in, and Alu will find the flank on him, so there we have it. It is done. Mouse Sports, they go for the buy, and they play it so well. I mean, Chris J, he knows he just needs to get close with the CZ, and magic will happen. And once again, he delivers. Just gets up in their face. The second one was pretty much Lady Luck giving him a nice big wink there, <laughs> because the guy literally ran into his crosshairs. But the first one, I mean, still, Chris, man, he has to close the gap, and he does it perfectly using the smoke, using Cloud Nine's own smoke against them. Yeah, I can't believe it. Absolutely beautiful. Well played, Mouse Sports. Such a big risk, and the reward was definitely there for it. Now Chris hiding at the edge here, they're up against just pistols. This is another dangerous position potentially. He misses the shot and now there's just a firing squad of people trying to bring him down. He's at 24, but he at least makes it back to safety. He could have just as well been dead there. Yeah, this is actually, I mean, it's not over yet because they're up on Cat as well here. Semphis with that deagle. Hiko's backing him as well, but Kerrigan's found them. Still, Shroud is going to catch Chris J out, and Hiko will pick up Kerrigan. This is now going to spin out of control here. Cloud9, they've got two AKs, and they've got the bomb site as well. And a two-on-four retake for Mouse Sports, it's actually looking kind of grim here. This is this is like a Counter-Strike circus. Nothing it, like, this isn't supposed to happen. None of this is how it really works, but somehow it does anyway. Alu and Legia, bomb's going to go down any second. At least they have kits, and they have one smoke, which they can actually use down on long here, which is not that bad. Cloud9 have actually planted in not so great position, but they're still going to be able to cover it here. One on three. Shroud picks up a triple kill here, representing Canada on this team. It is going to be 5 3 moving into the ninth round, and Mouse Sports are now the ones back on ecoing. This is madness, Sembler. The online god is here. This is madness, though, and it's going to happen again, Anders. Although Legia and Tabson both go in 5 7s. Tut tut, boys. Tut tut. They're actively harming their team right now. 
like choosing not to go CZ. But still, three guns, two five sevens, good nades here from Outsports. This is definitely a round that they can do damage in. Sean Gares has now got his AWP. Semphis, Upper Dark, they're trying to bait it out. Three guys there for Cloud9, trying to peek together at once. Hoping that Mouse Sports, that somebody on Mouse Sports will overextend and really try and look into Upper Dark. But Mouse Sports play it well. They keep control of the situation and don't overpeak. Now Semphis has got to be really careful. He might be walking right into Alu's, uh, Alu's crosshair here. And backup is coming in from Legia as well. Alu spots one guy out. Is Legia going to throw that flashbang? It's all about timing right now. Just the one flash down the middle as well. we got to keep an eye on Tabson because he might be given a target at any moment. But it feels like it's going to be down to Legia and Alu up here. This is going to be really them to stop this push. Legia's got a cool flash that he can chuck out here to stop it once it starts coming in, though. When does it happen, though? There's the flash. Legia goes for his. Grandma throw. He's going to be blinded, but that also stops Cloud9 from pushing in. Shroud is going to get caught by Legia. 5-7 in hand. Doesn't get a second one, but there is still Alu. Only that he gets taken out immediately. Yeah, I think Alu got partially flashed from the flash band of Legia through, which actually kind of messed up their defense a little bit. So that's a real shame, because it was definitely a great idea that Mousebots had uh, right there. The retake, I actually don't think they should go for it, uh, strange yeah. as it sounds. Unless Chris J can hit this shot immediately on nothing. That was the one thing right there. If Chris J could have killed nothing on back plateau immediately, that could have been a totally different scenario. Instead, Tapson's actually peeking towards B slope, so that's a... It's a pretty nice kill there. But Mouseboards still have a lot of gear. I mean, they have $9,600 worth of value on them right now. This Backing off to hold on to this is a good call for them. Because they still have Kevlar. That's not going to change the fact, you know, they don't need the helmets. So with AKs, you're dead if you get hit to the face anyway. So it's just like, hold on to this gear. Maybe get some rifles and drop the 5.7. Drop CZs for your mates in the next round. So the way this turns out, actually, is we've sort of almost been, been flipping sort of a conceptual coin at this point for the first eight rounds. And now finally in the ninth round, I actually think it sort of more or less comes down on cloud nine side of the coin um, because now mouse sports are in a really tricky position. That's a little bit worse. Cloud nine gets to stack up a little bit of money, which means if they lo start losing now, they can still buy. If mouse sports loses upcoming round, they won't be able to buy. They'll have to eco again and cloud nine all of a sudden jump up to you know, six rounds or something in the first half, which, as we know now, is actually not that easy to get on the terrorist side of, uh, of Dust 2. So I think, in all this chaos, I think actually so far Cloud9 is coming out ahead here. Nothing. Just narrowly getting that kill on Carrigan. Almost uh, could have lost his life there. Yeah, and Tabson is waiting to see if nothing's going to continue pushing forward. Smoke goes down to block off those doors, though. But it's going to be the boost tower here. All who's going to hop up on Tabson's shoulders. Does he actually find the peak, though? Does Semphis give him a target? Sean Gears is on the other side as well. They just need to push a little bit further here. And there's the first one on nothing. Trying to fall back immediately. Tabson's still waiting down here, but they can just push up on short and get that bomb down and they'll be fine. Hiko restraining himself to, to not take that fight. Definitely not a good idea for him to fight uh, at that point in time. Bomb's down any second now, and the retake again is going to be really tough here. And Mouse Sports won't have enough money for the upcoming rush. If they do force it up again, it'll be without orbs. And that was the big strength for Mouse Sports. You know, the double orb setup won't be happening. I want to say that they really badly need to find Sean Gares right now and try and find an AWP. There's also, unfortunately for them, Chris J died with his M4A1 up on Cat, so they can't get to that easily. But they do manage to find an AK, and they've got a FAMAS. So these are actually pretty solid finds here for Mouse Sports. If they can make it alive, out alive with these two guns, that's a big win for them. But look at Cloud9. They're already closing in. Hiko just barely misses them. I don't know if he spotted them going into T-Spawn. This is going to be a tough hold here. Mouse Sports cannot face. Just crouch and hide. Oh, yeah. They're going to yeah, be successful doing that. So, no, they couldn't even buy an orb if they wanted to. They're not even a glass cannon orb is, a, is an option at this point. But because they saved these two rifles, I mean, it wouldn't be too much of a shock if they did force it up. And um, some armor, just Carrigan evening out the money. It seems like, yeah, they really want to save for the double orb. And I actually think that's a good idea. I mean, it's still CT side does too. And sure, granted, we've been seeing teams get a lot of rounds on it. But, you know, it's like, it still feels like it's up for discussion as to whether this is a CT or T side map now. Yeah, I mean, I I just think mouse sports need to think about the long game here. Even if even if this is going to finish 9-6 in their favor, that's still a pretty good score. You know, you can if you get 9 rounds on the CT side, you're going to be all right. So I think they're thinking, well, let Cloud9 get the 6th round here, and that's it. Then we'll stop them. Yeah, that could be it. Like, just turn it around right there. I mean, double, they could go for the double op and let Alu and Chris J both pick up the ops. Let's see their money right now. 3,700 on Chris. Alu's got 2,800. Might be cutting it a bit close for him, but then Tabson has 3,900. So 
One way or another, they can definitely make a double op play work here for Mouseports, and that could be what turns it around versus Cloud9. Oh, it definitely could be. That's not even such a stretch to imagine that that uh, Mouse that's what Mouseports does on this map. Great work for nothing at the end. The unit with 15 health, he gets that kill on tabs. And I actually thought maybe Sean Gess was going to lose his AWP to Carrigan who was waiting up there. But it doesn't turn out that way. So it's AWP Auto Sniper and another AWP instead. So, all right. Mouseports mean business. Uh, there we are. That's what, that's what I was waiting for. All right, let's see it. Let's see it. So nothing smoke up mid. Pretty standard here. Although Alu, ah, he's off on the timing. Just barely there to land that shot through suicide. Gonna boost Chris up to look lower dark while they've got Tabson covering short. So pretty good setup here. And again, the auto sniper is in the B bomb sign, just covering that back line. Not at all a bad idea. Chris spots the Molotov coming in and they are gonna have to fall back. They really can't stick around and wait for it. Bit of a shame. Would have been a good opening kill if they could have landed it. But still, Mouse Sports. They need to make this investment work, otherwise it's going to go from pretty bad to just awful. Tabs and flashed in on Semphis here, and they get a follow-up kill to Shroud going down. So things looking pretty good. Not the orbs doing the work right now, but in fact, Tabs and Carrigan. Yeah, working well together, using good nades, flashing in, all sorts of things coming out here from Mouseport. So this is looking like they have all the advantages now in this round. They fall back to the sites as well. So on the B site, they've got all who... And Legia both stacked up two scoped rifles. That's brutal. Alu misses a pretty bread and butter shot. And he manages to get both there? Did he actually tag nothing yeah. through Sean Garris? I think so. He did. Now it's Auto Sniper versus Hiko here. And Hiko goes down. Um, nice Molotov here all the way in the back to try and force him out. So it's a good idea. But even if he gets that kill on Chris, he's not going to win the round. So, um, yeah. Orb still alive. Auto Sniper still alive. 6-6. Six, six. Let's see if this grand plan for Mouse Sports is going to work out. If they make this 9-6, then it's a pretty well calculated investment from their point of view, though Cloud9 are going to buy two ops of their own and just challenge the middle. Yeah, exactly. And there <laughs> we go. It works. Alu is gone. That's one of the ops down for Mouse Sports. They're not going to be too pleased about that. Legia holds onto his Scar 20, though, and he just decides to put shots through into Upper Dark. No target yet. But Cloud9, I mean, Cloud9, look at this. They're just rotating guys over. They're putting a a lot of pressure on, and Hiko's going to be able to sneak through the smoke and pick off Legia. And just in time, Hiko is just going to be pushed in with the bomb following close on him. Really great opening from Hiko. That's a super bold move from him, and it really works out here. Semphis could have definitely executed Sean Gaz then. That was scarily close. It isn't quite over yet. Tabson's still alive. He's got the Molotov. If he could have put it down instantly, maybe he could have stopped Sean from uh, from putting the bomb down in that position. But this is, this is really rough for Tabson now. That Molotov can still help him deal with Semphis a little bit. But um, does he want to push or does he want to hold on to it here? I think he, I mean, he only got one kill this round, but it's definitely the most important kill of the round. That was super cool. Yeah, him and Shemfit, him and um, I believe it was Sean Gares who got the opening frag on Alu. Yeah, uh, regardless, it regardless, it's cool to see Cloud9. They just decide, okay, well, we pick off a guy going to B already, right? And that's always a good sign, or basically, like that can weigh heavily towards you making that B call. But then Hiko's just like, yeah, okay, they're trying to delay. They've got a Scar 20. They smoke. Whatever. I'm going to push through the smoke and sneak up on Legia yeah, because I know that I already tagged him once. Like, that's that's pretty bold, a pretty bold move coming out of Hiko. That's a confidence play right there. So, man, he pretty much serves it up on a silver platter for Cloud9. There isn't a whole lot that Mouse Words can do once he gets into the site with Legia, and both Legia and Alu down. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is, though. I mean... It's looking really tough right now for, for Mouse Sports because now they can't make the choice that they did earlier of saving. They kind of have to buy, you know, all the remaining rounds, which isn't that much. It's this round and the next one because they have to make this work. Chris is in the middle with the AWP and Semphis is on the other side as well. Just looking to take a fight here with the Dutch Orber and he's going to come out on top here, Semphis, taking down Chris J. So, yeah, four versus four. And Tab's in alive on this A site already managing to hold off the cat push that could potentially come through. Sean Garris has got that bomb. Imagine they're going to be using Sean Gears and Semphis together to try and peek together, basically, and find that opening frag that will give them this bomb site. Kerrigan is still looking towards long, but he's going to come back to Cat, and this could be it now. There's going to be a potential crossfire here for Mouseports. Grenading the bomb site, flash banged in. It's uh, Tabson. He spots the bomb. He lands three headshots in a row. Only Semphis barely lives, and that's a hell of a lot of damage dealt out here from Tabson, who's just been playing really well so far. Semphis gonna go down with grenade from Alu and that's gonna be finally around here for Mouseport 7-7. Seven, seven. This is turning into a, a very, very interesting game. Damn, that's a problem though. Tabson, he's just he's literally a split second short of picking up that AWP for Chris J. 
So there won't be an AWP this round on Mouse Sports' side. They just didn't have enough money for it. It's going to be full rifles, full nades. So they have that, but Cloud9 are still going for that double AWP play. They had plenty of money going into this 15th round. Double grenade in. Semphis actually takes a lot of damage, and he's going to go down. Tamson just uh, going to spray right through Legia with another spray through Smoke this time. Dropping uh, nothing down to 36. So maybe Mouse Sports could end up winning this half anyway. If they just uh, get this last round home, I love it. They're trying to they're trying to keep them off of that AWP, but they do manage to get it. And now Chris J's got his AWP. Thank you, Semphis. It's a gift. He sent it over with my call. You know, basically. Sweet. That's very sweet of him. That is nice. I mean, you know, Chris J is like you know, he doesn't have his AWP. He doesn't feel complete. His role in life, you know, it's just not there anymore. So Semphis, he knew that. He wanted to look out. I gotta be careful about that though, because Chris is gonna use that up to kill his teammate Sean Gares, so that's definitely not cool. Carrigan gonna peek out down in the middle here. Does he spot anybody? He goes right on the other side, and Carrigan wants to walk in. Now he's trapped in a weird spot, but he makes it out anyway. Tabson is gonna be coming up from behind, and Pico already down here. Nothing taking the fight, but he was low from earlier. And Alu will pick up the last kill. So great triple from Tabson, who's been playing out of his mind here at 18, 3, and 6. An incredible ratio for a first half of the game. And the overall score is 8 to 7 in favor of Mouse Sports. Yeah. Yeah, that's really impressive. Tabson in particular, wow. Just top fragging by a large margin. Kerrigan also had it, having some crucial rounds. Not too much going on for Leggy and Chris J to start things off, but nearly everybody's positive on Mouse Sports' side. So that, that'll give you some confidence going to the remainder. Of this, uh, of this first map, but now what do they have for us here? What do they have for us on T side? I really want to get going here. I don't want there to be much of a break between these halves because Mouse Sports, well, they want to hold on to the momentum. It's, this is just an interesting game because that trade that was going on in the beginning where they just kept losing and winning rounds left and right, uh, every time someone eco it seemed like they'd win a round, but then you know the team that just forced it up, they, they can't really do it, and it just keeps going back and forth. I think what what ultimately killed it for Mouse Sports in this scenario is that it delayed that double up setup for such a long time. And when they finally got it, it was like it worked one round, but then they lost all the rifles afterwards and it kind of all backfired on them anyway. So not really, you know, Mouse Sports trying a bit of a gamble, but it ended up meaning they couldn't play to their strengths afterwards. And that is obviously tricky. We'll see. Rush out long here. Cloud9, they have three members. Flashbangs rain in. Semphis already going down, but nothing getting a good return kill on Legia. And now they want to fall back, though. Sean Gess is going to be hiding in this corner, which is definitely a little bit scary. He could get grenaded down if they had any grenades. He's going to take the fight anyway. And now they're coming up from short as well. Sean Gess goes down. Chris with a great double entry. He needs a little bit more. He's got seven bullets left looking for a kill. He's found Shroud here, and it will be a triple for him. Now it's all on Hiko. Instant headshot on that one. And he's going to rebench it back to middle. Yeah, guess what? It is going to be a B play here out of Mouseport. So they're going to be able to get into upper dark. Hiko, he sees this coming, though. Realizes that Chris J was just a distraction. Looking to see if he can't catch them. He has to verify. Okay, short. Is that going to be the play? But that smoke going up at the doors. There you go. That's the signal. Hiko, right here, though. He could try and go running through this smoke. He could try and go for the aggression. But he doesn't hear that bomb plant actually happen. And that's going to slow him down. This is really, really tough for Hiko. I mean, he's close enough that the kit's not going to make the biggest difference right now unless he waits a lot longer. Smoke is going to disappear, but he needs to land another instant headshot before this is going to work out. So a little bit of patience game here coming out. Tabson, is he going to take it? Yeah, he takes a look. And now they know where Hiko is, and that pretty much gives up the game now. They're just going to be cross-firing him. I don't think he can actually make it out anymore. He runs in, and Tabson will take him out. And that's going to be that's going to be it. 9-7 to seven here. Mouse Sports winning the second half pistol. Good job. All right, and no surprise here, going to be the force out of Cloud9, so Semphis not wasting any time. That might be a bit of a mistake, actually, because look at how long it's taking the rest of the team to buy up behind. Uh, they're still going to go for the double scout, so Cloud9, okay, they're going to go for the buy. Semphis just being so quick but, about it, but look whatever. But what Mouse are doing, they're actually just going to rush the B-bomb side. They don't want to play a slow game against scouts. They just want to get up close and personal, but nothing doesn't care. He lands a headshot anyway. Shroud gets one with the C set. Oh no, this was a great calculation by Mouse Sports. They just didn't count on Shroud being absolutely insane. He's going to get two kills in here with the C set before he finally goes down. And now it's a, well, almost a one on four here as Chris has one health. Yeah, okay, nothing down to 18. They have a man coming in from T-Spawn as well. Cloud9 are about to sandwich onto this site, and there isn't a whole lot Mouseboards can do. 
They're, I mean, this is going to turn into the crossfire. There we have it. Sent this from upper halls. And, and Hiko, Hiko will find jumping. the final shot. Hiko jumping from the window here or the gap in the wall. Really cool stuff. That was... I mean, yeah, just like first half, it the second half just starts off completely chaotic. But a great, I mean, an absolutely impressive performance on Cloud9. And I actually think Mouseboards did the right thing trying to rush in here. Because we've seen so many teams crumble on this map due to playing slow against the scouts and just slowly getting picked apart one at a time. And Mouseboards said, we're not going to do that. We want to make sure that doesn't happen. We just couldn't candle Shroud. Exactly. I mean, Shroud dancing around that box. With the crossfire, that was it. Nothing is going to find his second frag. Nothing with the third. Scout coming in handy here. It's doing massive damage. Alu's finally going to make it to Top Cat. He's going to try and look at that A site. Maybe drop into CT if he wants to. I, I do believe no. nothing just picked up four kills with the scout. One of them being a no-scope headshot in the middle. So you pointed out something earlier, which is that if nothing is doing well on this Cloud9 team, then things start to get really scary. Nothing has the skill ceiling to probably be one of the best players in the world. Uh, has been playing Counter-Strike for a very long time, so this is pretty frightening. He's at 16 kills, and Cloud9 getting a lot of traction right now. Yeah, Cloud9, this is this is starting to be pretty scary. Mouseport's going for the full eco, though. They want to get the AWPs, but it's going to be Sean Cares with the Pro90. Nothing there, lending a hand, and this is just a slaughter. Chris J not even lasting too long in that situation. Three, no, two kills, two kills and one. So Cloud9 maintaining the money, just keeping that pressure up. Now we get to see, though, the big round from Mouse Sports. Chris J's got his AWP. No AWP picked up for Alu, though. So it's going to be four rifles and the one sniper rifle here for Mouse Sports. And Cloud9 could have gone for a counter orb if they really felt pressured by it. But now being on the CT side, I mean, they can choose to take the fights a little bit differently. And they're not even going to, they're not even going to attempt it. Chris J running down suicide with a with the AWP out, just wants to get really fast up here, try and see if he can catch an AWP timing. And I mean, he's going to be on short much quicker than anybody expects. He, they could, if he gets the kill on Semphis here, they just open up the round so big. He misses the flick though, has one more chance. I think he knows there's nobody inside the bomb site. He realizes the timing he's found. This is beautiful play from Chris. Very smart play. Yeah, it certainly helps that um, Alu's taken out nothing at long as well. This is severely weakening the defense. They know that somebody's lurking here, though. So Cloud9, they're sending Shroud up to Longhouse. Alu's got the perfect angle, though. Shroud might come walking up here and take a bullet to the face. They're actually deciding to put him on Cat instead. This is buying so much time. Nice bullet off to force tabs and out. Shroud coming in. It's a follow-up on Legia. Mouse Sports have played this round so well so far. If it falls apart now, that's going to be heartbreaking. But Chris is there to make sure it doesn't happen. And the rest of Cloud9, how are they going to get through this smoke? Well, they won't. Carrigan with a great headshot on Hiko, and Shroud's going to be falling back. So, well, let's just quickly go through why Chris could guess what just happened, because that's actually very cool. It is very common for the CT side to push three people down here towards long to anticipate some sort of long rush, because obviously rushing long is a lot faster than rushing short, which is, uh, you know, this whole path here. But when you don't see anyone down here, obviously you're going to rotate at least one and probably two people back so that you'll probably have one person up here and one person down on long instead. And Chris just realized if I just run straight up short, by the time one of them starts going back and that guy was Semphis, they'll have no one in the bombsite to crossfire me with. I have a free shooting gallery going down on long. That was perfect play. Right, let's see though. Semphis is going to start off strong using that AWP to pick up Tabson, who's been doing a lot of work for Mouseport. So that's a great kill to get at the beginning of this round. Mouse sports though, walk right into Sean Gares. It's Legia this time. Double up, they figured out, okay, there's two sniper rifles now on Cloud 9's side. Nothing will take out Kerrigan, and this is quickly shaping up to be Cloud 9's round. Very little chance now of Mouse Sports actually coming out ahead in this one. That'd be devastating for them, especially if they lose the AWP and the and the AK here. But then again, how are they gonna save it with more than a minute left? That's also an issue. Things are really looking grim right now for, for Mouse Sports because if they, if Cloud9 make it out with all the rifles alive right here, including the double up setup, and Mouseport will have to eco again, North American team can just get so much money on their side before Mouseport can do anything about it. Yeah, Chris J will have enough for a glass cannon op. That's one thing, but all right, let's see. Do they actually check to the left? Hiko's hiding in that corner. Ninja, does he find the angle? And yes, he does. Hiko will pick up Alu. Hiko will pick up Chris, and that's gonna be it. Lights out for Mouse. Cloud9 are looking way too good right now. He, uh, nothing is catching up with Tabs in here, just one kill separating the two players, and it's 11-10. Round lead going in favor of Cloud9, and they have the double up, and this, what, a couple of Shrek 9s on Mouse Sports, that's it. It's not too impressive right now. Let's 
Tempest landing a good shot there on Tabson, and they got to be careful that somehow Sean Gares doesn't get caught in this corner. He's got the CSAT out, and he's going to be taking a quick kill and then falling back, and he's got Tempest there to cover him. Some some sort of buddy system going on in the middle here, and it's working out quite well. Yeah, that's pretty much the reason why Sean Gares can hang around there like that. He's not, That's not going to save him, though, and Alu manages to pick up Semphis as well. Eco peeking down on B Slope is going to find the perfect timing and get the double kill as well to shoot Leggy in the back and then find the headshot on Alu. Uh, that was a nice, that was some fancy P250 work there for a second from Mouseports to do some decent damage. Only problem is that Hiko saves the AWP at the end, so they don't actually cost Cloud9 that much money. Only an M4, and well, Cloud9 don't really care about that right now, and they've got the money on their side. Nothing with 8,000 bank. Yeah, saving the ops right now is definitely the, the key, the priority here for, uh, for Cloud9. Just uh, keep them alive for as long as possible. Mouseports. They really need to start winning. Their round loss bonus isn't even that great, so if they lose this round here, they're gonna be they're gonna be ecoing again. They're not at the point where they can just keep buying no matter what, so this is really important. There are not that many rounds left in this first uh, map here. Nothing. It's a patience game up here. Sean also looking down towards on low Oh nothing! Picks up the first two kills, steals an AK, he can't keep the spray down. And Shroud is going to come in with a bit of a grenade. They also got Semphis over here ready to scope up on anybody who might show themselves. And Chris, he tried to get the angle through. Not quite going to connect with it. Semphis still has a pretty good angle here. And he takes down Legia. Yeah, now it's all on Chris here. Oh, and he gets Semphis who was jumping to look over. He's so fast, Chris. But with 40 seconds, Semla, do you see him winning this? He could potentially pull it off if he wants to wrap back around to B. But he has to waste so much time clearing out these angles right now. Because he didn't get eyes past first two so he you know he's cleared out long this is great but now he needs to try and walk his way up here and sean gares is already in position to deal with this push as soon as it comes through he's holding off the cross so chris he is actually going to get flashed and they spot him out now with 20 seconds left this is pretty i mean it's chris j it's magic time let's see it misses the shot and that's not going to help shroud gets the punish and there you have it chris just could not afford to make a mistake in that situation you, you you have to wonder. It's like that back of your mind. You're thinking, what happens if he does land that first shot? Is that going to be enough? Well, we're not going to get the answer this time around. And Cloud9 now with a three-round lead. Mouse Sports having to eco, just buying a couple of pistols here. And that double-up setup is still being kept alive. And that is really important here. Cloud9 could lose around and probably still force it up. Hiko doesn't have a lot of money, but I'm sure they'll make do anyway. Uh, nothing still has some good money on his side. Sean Gares with the entry frag to take out Legia. Missing the flick for the cat shot, but still, damage is done, and he doesn't need to worry any longer. Although, it's going to be the barbecue! Sean Gares actually gets one with the molly. Uh, Carrigan very low on health, and Alu is going to be the last man standing. He goes down to some wild spray from nothing. Now, 14 to 10. This is working out very differently than I had imagined. Um, and yeah, I think Mouse Sports... The way that the early game works out for them, just it just damages their economy so badly later on. They've really been struggling to pick up enough rifles here. More importantly, the chain rounds together. Actually, chain rounds together. That's the big thing here for Maus. But here's their big opportunity. Chris J once again has his AWP. Cloud9, however, they're fixing to go for a push in upper dark. And they're going to have a man holding close to mid doors as well. They could go for the sandwich here. Oh, this is a very good time to do this. They just got to move before Chris comes in, because if he sees them up here, he's going to be walking right in. Hiko spots him. Chris knows, but it's too late. Hiko lands the shot. They get mid-control, though, on the Mouseport side, and Cloud9 want to get back into this. Semphis going to miss the shot, and this is working out great for Mouseports here. One on four. That was that was almost like rolling the dice. It could have gone, gone either way for, uh, for both teams here. Yeah, it almost seems like Cloud9... As soon as they realize that they've lost control, that they've already pushed through, feels like it feels like Cloud9, you know, they could have gone for like a half existence there. You know how existence basically from Titan, now they'll smoke off the doors and basically clear out Upper Dark. They, ki they killed off Chris J. They could have potentially just held in Upper Dark and waited for the rotation to come in from the rest of their team. Yeah, so, I think that would have been the smart move, actually. I think they were just a half second too late. And once they realized that they were half second too late, they had already committed to it. And at that point, it's fight or die. And... Mouse sports, they they had all the momentum. Yeah, they might not have realized how close Mouse Sports was to get into the bomb side either. Of course, we could see they were sort of already just you know charging into it, but they might have thought they can get into better positions to actually cover the middle. So um, 
That's just what it's down to here. Sean Guess has the AWP. Chris has one on his side. A lot can change here. Great opening headshot from Tabson. Absolutely beautifully uh, landed there. And that's going to be an opening. If, if Cloud9 lose this round, on the other hand, they're going to be in a slightly tricky position uh, with their economy. So it's not over yet for Mouseports, actually, even though it's close. Certainly not. This is That's eco-territory for Cloud9, or at least CZ territory. So... Cloud9, they haven't given up yet, but Alu's gonna find Semphis, who is trying to peek into T-spawn. There's still a second man at long, however, that's nothing, but the two-man advantage here basically opens it all up for Mouse Sports, and they're actually smoking their way across Cat to get onto this site. They really are worried about the potential op trying to hold them from long. Cloud9 should really con seriously consider saving these rifles here, because giving up uh, on one op and two rifles, and also the... The armor and the kits and the grenades, just a little bit too much. I mean, they again, they can't rebuy everything here, so yeah, they're not even going to go for it. And that makes a lot of sense. I mean, he goes on 250, and at 1600 for Sean Guess, if they start losing rifles, they won't be able to rebuying them. So I think this is a smart choice for the, uh, the NA team. Yeah, they'll be able to drop, let me see, they'll be able to drop at least two rifles next round. So they, they this shouldn't be a problem, so long as they can keep three players alive here for Cloud9. They'll be able to keep uh, a reasonable buy going, although that'll spend the rest of their money in the next round if they do go for the drop. And that can, I mean, basically it gets them that much closer to, to being forced into an eco situation. So it's really scary right now for Cloud9. But Mouse Sports on the other side, they've got money. They've got a lot of money. Although Alu just dropped 7,000, so he no longer has much money. <laughs> And he did that because he has the long spawn for the orb. And Chris is too far away. So, I mean, Chris is going to be sniping middle. Just uh, trying to take a fight. And over at long, Alu wants to see if he can pick off Sean Gares. So, it's going to be a bit of a fight. And Alu comes out on top. So, that 7k investment just paid off really well. That's that's simply a buy that's based around his spawn position. So, very cool stuff. Yeah, and Chris J gets the tag on Shroud, who's trying to jump across to B site as well. So this is this is very much a round that is set up for Mouse Sports to take it. They have the advantage. They have a man and a half advantage. Nothing gets dropped down low as well. This is starting to look very scary here for Cloud9. Yeah, they double grenaded the catwalk and nothing, as you said, down to 37 here. So definitely very painful for him. Oh man, if they lose this, they're definitely going to be echoing. And at that point, things start to get hairy. That could be Mouse Sports equalizing the game and having a, a pretty weak bank to work with. If this if this is the question. This is when you start wondering, you know, if Cloud9 is if it's time to be, you know, risky. Basically, try and play the risk, push out, push into upper dark right now, for example. Um, get info as to where Mouse Sports are are pushing and try and get a frag back rather than holding passively because you have taken damage and nothing. He's in position to hold Cat to Goose, but it's going to be a long push and this is the worst spot for him to be in. There you go. Chris J instantly kills him. Semphis has no idea that they're all rushing up behind him. Definitely a bit of a strange position here. I think Semphis looked a little bit confused there. He's going to take down Tabson, though, with actually a pretty impressive flick. And the bomb will go down. Tough retake coming in. But if three on three at the A-bomb side, they should definitely go for it here. They've got the kits, and they need to start uh, closing out this game. Yeah, Chris J is going to hear the steps as well from Shroud. He should be prepared to take the shot. Misses it, though. Nice little shoulder pick there by Shroud to throw off the timing. But Chris is still going to be alive in pit. This gets pretty tough here for Shroud to actually land the shot. Chris, and there's the flick, and that's going to seal the deal. Semphis can't even get out. Alu will pick up three kills in the round. Great stuff. Um, I'm very confused because Semphis was actually right here on the on the CT spawn ramp, and he was he was scoping up towards the B bomb site like he thought someone was going to come up to the to the doors, and it almost looked like he was going to team kill one of his friends, and in the meantime, they actually just left Long completely open, so I think there was some communication issue going on on Cloud9. I think they were a little bit confused about what was going on here. Uh, their response in this round is going to be to go for pistols and a scout here. Yeah, that's the... Now they actually have the momentum, all of the momentum on Mouseboard's side. This is really shaping up to be the comeback here. T-side does too, right? It's odd to be saying that, but it really does feel like that CT advantage map now. So yeah. this is, I mean, this is Mouse Sports battling their way back into this, in a, into a scenario where they can actually win this. It's going to be a do or die round for Cloud9 next. They're going to save everything just to buy for the next round and stop Mouse Sports cold, or at least guarantee overtime. Yeah, I would say overtime is actually very like, uh, that That could definitely happen right now. That's definitely a unlikely, just because of, of the money on Mouse Sports, which means if, once Cloud9, if they come back and win a round here, they're still going to be able to buy a nice shutdown, just uh, knocking Semphis out with that C said. And uh, see if nothing can do something with the scout. He landed a bunch of headshots earlier in the game, so maybe he could do it again here. Kind of has to. They're rotating back. Yeah, rotation to Shroud. He's got the Deagle. 
Oh, Shroud can't deliver with the headshots, though. Nah, he's nope. gonna go down. Kiko in the middle actually does get a running headshot on, uh, on Alu, but it's not gonna be quite enough at this rate. He will go down, and finally, nothing comes in with that scout, but it might be a bit too late. Yeah, Chris J's got full HP and he's the one battling. Great play there by nothing. The 180 CZ to the face, like, yeah, get out, son. Nothing is here. Okay, then. It's kind of do or die time, but it mostly is for, for Cloud9. They, I mean, they've lost four rounds in a row. This is going to be the fifth one, so... Actually, they have a pretty big bank on nothing. Oh, they just spent a lot of it there, so... Well, nothing and... Shroud can buy if they lose this round. Everyone else can't. At least not uh. fully. Yeah, what? Wait. Did Shroud really get tagged down to 3 HP crossing? What in blazes? Apparently so. That is pain. That is agony right there. You start the round at 3 HP, man. What can you do? Sempus, Sempus wins though. the battle. That's super important here. The Mouse Sports lose this round. Obviously, they're going to be fighting for overtime, but they can still definitely get that. They have so much money. Oh my god. This is such a close first map, and it is only the first map in this best of three. And my prediction was for Mouse Sports to win it, but um, Cloud9 have really impressed me with how they've been playing Dust2 here. Yeah, they've been doing a fantastic job, at least on the CT side. Although Mouse Sports have been getting closer and closer here. So now, can Cloud9 stand? 29th round here, they're on the edge, and the bomb is sneaking its way up Cat. Question is, do Mouse Sports know that they got the tag on Shroud, and will that actually have a role in their play? They need to know if they can go here for the B split. They might be able to, to hope, but I don't think they can really know it just yet. Great grenade from nothing as well, and now he's very close here. He's going to walk right in, sprays one out of bullets. Pistols out instead, and Legia goes down. Great work here from the uh, the American player. Semphis is going to get dropped, though, running headshot from Carrigan. Let's see if nothing has more uh, for us here. He's still got 73 health, and he's walking up, but Allah will be there. Just executes him looking over the uh, railing, and the bomb goes down. It's going to be a two-on-three retake. All right, let's see it. I mean, Alu is still in a pretty, pretty decent position here. Shroud might go for the boost. They could potentially go for that play. It's going to be Shangri's walking up on slope. Alu not going to land the shot. He's got the CZ. Kerrigan's still here. Kerrigan doing the, doing the majority of the damage, but we're into the 1v1, and Hiko oh. will clutch it. Lands the headshot through the box, and there you have it. Alu is out. He didn't even wait for it. He actually just shoot, put that shot right through the box. That's very cool. Uh, some experience showing there on Hiko, and you're right, clutching it all on his own. Mouse Sports, ex you're just using the whole bank here, including Carrigan again, doing what Alu did earlier. Spawns close to long run, wants to go for it. A Cloud9 looking primed right now. Nothing at 27 kills. If they take this first map, I think Mouse Sports are in a lot of trouble. Or they are going to be struggling somewhat because, yeah, cash is going to be real tough for Mouse Sports. I mean, can't, Mouse Sports are good at cash. But Cloud9 are also very solid on that map, so it's yeah. a battle the entire way through here. Although the next map is Mirage, that's definitely Mouse Sports' territory. It should be, right? I mean, it should be. Kerrigan trying to get into the middle, but Shroud is up here waiting for him just by the scaffolding, and he's got nothing covering the other side, so it's going to set up for some really good teamwork here for, for Cloud9. Although Shroud timing is almost off, he almost gets shot in the back here, nothing comes in to help out, he gets the one, and Shroud will pick up the second kill on Carrigan, and I think that pretty much seals the deal. T Tabson and Chris here, two on five. I don't think they can find their way out of this. I think this is pretty much it. Sean Garris has got the angle. Ready to hold from A site if they try and push up on Cat. Goes for the flick, does not hit it. Chris J will find the frag on him instead, but the remaining I mean, the remaining members of Cloud9 are closing in, and nothing is going to get the double kill at the end. Triple total stops them cold from getting onto that site. Triple kill, 30 uh, frags at the end there for, uh, for, for nothing. Definitely a very close game, of course. 16-14, but it will be Cloud9 that comes out on top. That means we're going to go to Mirage to see... Uh, who can actually close it out? That was a that was one hell of an action packed game. That was just a uh, super fast from beginning to end. Very very rare, in fact. But guys, before we get into it, we're gonna go for a quick commercial break. So uh, stay with us right here. We're gonna play a little bit of music, and we will be right back.